it's Rebecca and today is another book review day. This one is the 10th book that I have read from the 2015 reading challenge. I will put a little link down below in the description box to explain what the reading challenge is about but basically you have to read 52 books over the year of 2015, each book coming from a different category and the book that I am reviewing today has come from the category of a memoir and this one is Junior by Macaulay Culkin. So I will read you the blurb and then talk to you a bit about the book. Junior would like to get a few things off his chest. He does not know how to write a book, except maybe this one. His therapist says he has issues with closure. Granted, this book has seven endings. This is not a novel. Everything in it is entirely true, except for the large portions that are completely fictional. And finally, Junior has no issues with his father. Nope, really, not a single one. In a dizzying kaleidoscope of words and images, actor and writer Macaulay Culkin takes readers on a twisted tour to the darkest corners of his fertile imagination. Part fictional memoir, part rant, part comedic tour de force, Junior is filled with the hard-won wisdom of Culkin's quest to come to terms with the awesome pressures of childhood megastardom and family dysfunction. He understands that having fun and being happy are two totally different things. Yet at the same time, he warns the end of the world is coming and I'm going to have unfinished business. Searingly frank and brain teasingly inventive, Junior is breathtaking proof that Culkin has found his own utterly original voice. Now, this is a little bit of a strange book to read for the category of a memoir. But I do have to say, I was enticed by the cover. Um, I don't know why. It was just so busy and full of words and, and things and strange little pictures and that kind of thing. And also, I was tempted by the, the font used for the text. And it's, I don't know the official term for it, but it's the, the typewriter font um yeah I don't know how well you can see that but I was in the library and I was tidying and I saw this and I just flicked it open and and had a had a quick browse through and there was just something that caught me with it and I have to say I enjoyed it very very much when you think of a memoir you usually think of somebody who has lived a long life who starts off their story about being born and, and what their childhood was like and then all of their experiences in whatever field they, they work in, telling you about all the wonderful and terrible things that have happened that have brought them to, to this point in their 70s or 80s where they're, where they're facing the end of their life. And this one is written by a young man in his 20s. For those of you that don't know who Macaulay Culkin is, where have you been? He is, or he was famous for being the young boy in the film Home Alone. And with most young actors or young Hollywood stars, they get all the fame and all the money thrust upon them at a young age and then they rebel and then things go wrong, they get arrested, they take drugs, their world falls apart around them. And then eventually they kind of build themselves back up again. But they, they go through a rebellious stage where everything is just madness. And that's what happened with Macaulay Culkin. He was given wonderful opportunities as a child to be an actor. Extremely popular, successful films he was in. And then he kind of fell apart. And with this book, you can kind of see that there's no story to it. It's not about his life where he was born and he grew up and this is what he did at school and these are his friends and this is what it was like being a film star. He says he's not using this as a form of therapy but that's what it feels like. It feels like he's got all of these thoughts and feelings and everything going on in his head and he's just letting it out. And to start with it feels like an incoherent group of words and musings and thoughts but it's put together extremely well. In it there's short stories, there's bits of scripts, there's poetry, um, there's lists, he likes lists, that was something suggested to him by his therapist to write lists, there's lots of lists. 
and it just gives you a little insight into his mind and he tells you throughout that some bits are fact and some bits are fiction and you don't know which is fact and which is fiction but it doesn't stop you enjoying it and it doesn't stop you realizing just what that boy had gone through and he doesn't talk about his childhood and he doesn't talk about his films and he, he mentions and a couple of times about being arrested but that's it really but you really get the sense of a torn mind that has been dragged in many directions he's been pushed and pulled by family by fans by Hollywood and I, I cannot believe that I really, really enjoyed this. I can't say I'm a huge Macaulay Culkin fan. I've seen a couple of his films, um, enjoyed them. You have to put Home Alone on at Christmas time, otherwise it's not properly Christmas. But this, I, I would say this is worth the read. It doesn't take that long, actually. Um, I started reading it two days ago, three days ago, actually, and I've kind of dipped in and out of it. So it really doesn't take that long to read. And even though there isn't a coherent story, there's no beginning, middle or ending, like he says in the blurb, there's seven endings to this book. You just want to read to find out what goes on. And he is quite a talented writer. He does explain at the beginning he's not a writer and this is the first time he's tried anything really like this. And he doesn't expect it to be very good. But it is. His poetry is quite clever. His way with words, his storytelling ability is really quite clever and like I say I just I just enjoyed it I like I like little snippets of things I like dipping in and out of people's lives and I don't like people who wallow a lot of autobiographies and memoirs that I've read there's a lot of wallowing all oh, my childhood was very tough or all these things went wrong everybody has problems I mean there's lots and lots of things that have happened to us throughout our lives that are awful and all the things that have gone wrong in Macaulay Culkin's life, he doesn't wallow in them. He just puts it down to experience and, and he just seems to take things as they are. I don't know. I can't really explain. I'm not a psychologist, psychiatrist. I, I can't really delve into people's psyches. But he comes across as unstable, but not to the point of madness. He just... He just comes across as a young boy who's got who's had a lot go on in his life and he's just releasing it. And sometimes I think we're a little bit afraid to do that. There's things that have gone on in all our lives, but we hide it away and we lock it up and we don't talk about it. But he's just let it out. And I think that's a very brave thing to do. And like I said, I think this is well worth a read. Even if you don't like Macaulay Culkin... He doesn't really make reference to himself in the book, so it could have been written by anybody, which again just makes it so much more interesting than a run-of-the-mill memoir or autobiography. So give it a go. Just give it a go. It's fun. It's fun. I really enjoyed reading this. So if you would like to hear any of my other book reviews, then please subscribe to my channel. I put new videos out every time I've read a book. And I also do shameless self-promotion where I share my own writing and sometimes give out writing advice so if you're interested in reading and or writing then please subscribe to my channel and I will see you soon. Bye bye!